Throughout NFL history, there are very few defensive players that have had the impact on the NFL that J.J. Watt has. He is one of the greatest players of our generation. And as a kid, J.J. Watt mesmerized me. Seriously, every single time he was on TV, my eyes were glued to the screen. As just watching him make play after play after play, get sack after sack after sack, and just watching him invoke fear into every offensive lineman he matched up with in his prime. J.J. Watt was incredible. And for anybody who didn't watch the NFL during his prime or didn't watch J.J., is too young to watch prime J.J. Watt, I'm sorry. Because J.J. Watt was incredible. And unfortunately, J.J. Watt's incredible 12-season career has come to a close as he is now retiring. He played in his final game against the San Francisco 49ers yesterday. In this game, he would finish with five tackles, including two sacks. And he did have some flashes of prime J.J. Watt. Speaking of prime J.J., today we're going to be going through the entire incredible career of J.J. Watt. So without further ado, I do not want to waste any more of your guys' time. Let's get started. J.J. Watt played two years at Wisconsin and one year at Central Michigan before deciding to go to the NFL. In his junior season with the Badgers, Watt would have a great season, which included 62 total tackles, 7 sacks, and 1 interception, before he was drafted 11th overall in the 2011 draft by the Houston Texans. JJ made an immediate impact on this Houston defense. As a rookie, he finished with 56 tackles, 10 quarterback hits, and 5 sacks. But also, you could just see through the eye test that Watt was making this team better, and that his impact was going to grow as the years came on. His explosiveness and his ability to get to the quarterback was absolutely incredible, and he seemed like a defensive player that would be great for years. However, nobody knew what 2012 held for J.J. Watt, as he completed the season with 81 tackles, 69 of those were solo, almost 40 tackles for a loss, 43 quarterback hits, and 20 and a half sacks. That's video game type numbers, people. He was rewarded with the 2012 Defensive Player of the Year, as well as his first Pro Bowl and All-Pro appearance. In 2013, Watt would continue his great play as he finished with 65 solo tackles, 22 tackles for a loss, and 10 and a half sacks. He would also get a pick six. That was for 80 yards. Many thought that he should have won back-to-back -back defensive players of the year. However, this was given to Panthers linebacker Luke Keekley. Watt apparently took this one personally, and he played out of his mind in 2014, especially when it came to sacks and quarterback hits, with 20 and a half sacks and 51 quarterback hits once again being named Defensive Player of the Year, and he finished second in the MVP voting behind Aaron Rodgers. He would win the Defensive Player of the Year award in 2015. However, this will be the final time he wins the award. There is a pretty famous video of J.J. Watt trash-talking the entire New Orleans Saints offensive line, telling them they were disrespecting Drew Brees by allowing Watt to get to him so often. And when one of the linemen decided to trash talk JJ back saying, you haven't come to my side, come to my side and see what happens. Watt came and on the first play, he created a sack. Other than maybe the Legion of Boom Seahawks defensive backs, JJ Watt was the most feared defensive player of the 2010s. It seemed like nothing could go wrong for him. It seemed like JJ Watt was like the real life Superman. But every Superman has their kryptonite. And unfortunately, JJ's was injuries, beginning in 2016, as he would only appear in three games after suffering a hernia over the summer and returning too quickly. He would have to spend much of the year on IR. In 2017, things didn't get much better for Watt other than his Walter Payton Man of the Year award, as he's a great individual who did a lot for the community of Houston. But on the field, he only appeared in five games after suffering a fracture in his leg. Eight games in two seasons was really odd for JJ as before these two seasons he had played in all 16 games and normality would make a return in 2018 as he would play in all 16 games but his tackles seriously took a hit only having 47 solo tackles. However he still had 16 sacks and made his final of his five Pro Bowls. However you could see on the eye test that JJ Watt was starting to become slower. You could definitely see that he had been injured and that things were starting to come to a close. 
In 2019, Watt would appear in eight games before he suffered a tear, which would require him to miss the rest of the 2019-2020 season. The thing was that Watt was really effective when he was on the field. He was starting to become unreliable, and that is not something that you can have in the NFL and expect to have great success. He would finish one more complete season in Houston before the Texans decided to go with a rebuild and were not willing to pay the 31-year-old star what he wanted. And so then, Watt decided to join the Arizona Cardinals, where he then had the realization that he was not the same player anymore. The offensive linemen did not fear him like they used to, and in 2022, he made the unofficial announcement on Instagram that he would be retiring and then confirming it a few days later. Watt played in 15 games this season and has had the most sacks he's had since 2018 with 10 and a half, but the time had come and gone for Watt. His prime was officially over, and it seemed as though he wanted to go ahead and retire. Throughout his 12 seasons, Watt finished with 409 solo tackles, 172 tackles for a loss, 315 quarterback hits, and 112 and a half sacks. J.J. Watt has been and still is one of my favorite players ever. I wish him all of the best in whatever his next chapter is, even if that is just spending time with family, enjoying retirement, or watching his brothers TJ and Derek play for the Steelers. Guys, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, show it by hitting the like button and subscribing down at the bottom of your screen. It would mean the world to me and it helps me out a ton. Until next time, I want you all to have an awesome day and I'll see you later.